great ad that was done for Harley Davidson years ago it was a Harley logo tattooed on somebody's arm and it basically said, when was the last time you felt this passionately about anything? Great advertising makes food taste better, it makes cars run better, it, 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 it changes the perception of everything. Anybody who's a terrific ad person, from the creative side anyway, usually has those two qualities. They're salesmen and they're entertainers in one. It was the most exciting business you could possibly be in, and it was the right place for me. I mean, I tell pe people all the time, it's the same as making art. You know, I make stuff, I put it in people's faces, and it changes them, and hopefully it enriches them, makes them feel something, and it's really a rush to have it happen to millions of people at once. And he said, well, what do you think advertising is? And I said, well, I think advertising is poison gas. Advertiser should tear you up and should choke you, you should get the chills, and maybe you should pass out when you watch it. I hated the system. I hated the status quo. We were changing the world, and everybody respected it. They really understood you were changing the culture. I would make a political and graphic statements it, that grabs at the heart, grabs at your, at your, at your throat, and, and make statements about what the hell you think your life should be about. You know, and that's what I've done, I think, all my life with my advertising. I mean, I was always trying to sell product, but I was always making a point. If you can find that kernel, the core of what that product is, so that when you talk about it, no matter how you talk about it, People respond and say, yes, that's right. Then if you talk about it in a strong, interesting, memorable way, they say, yeah, that's right, I'm going to buy it. Great advertising almost always starts with something true. It was hundreds of million dollars spent before this on milk does a body good. And they would run the 100 yard dash and they'd go, whoa, whoa, whoa. That was untruthful. You do not chug milk after a 100 yard dash. I don't think it's good for you. And uh, the truth is, you cut up your strawberries, you put it on your cereal, you're sitting down, and blah, you don't have very much. Ah, I need milk. So there's the truth, and that's it. I look at a lot of ads on TV, and I think, wasn't there anyone in the room that said, that's not interesting, nobody is gonna care about that? Somebody needs to be saying that in every conference room where advertising is being approved. Making great advertising is a very emotional, very difficult process. And it is not for the faint of heart. You have to be able to talk to people that are not like you and, and convince them to do things that are not like them. It's a business of rejection. Things are getting killed all the time. You, you start working, you kill ideas for yourself. Then you show it to your partner, and he or she kills a few ideas. And then you show it to the, the, the client, and the client kills a few ideas. Then you show it to some people in a focus group, and they kill a couple of the ideas. And then you come back again and show it to the client again, and he decides he didn't like it after it all because his wife saw it. These are plastic push pins, and in this wall are 100,000 push pins. Fail harder. <laughs> It took them four days and four nights nonstop to do this. The background is made of push pins. The easy way would be to do the lettering as push pins and leave the wall blank. They chose the hard way. It's a perfectly executed concept, you know? And I think that this should be here forever. Well, it's like Babe Ruth trying to hit a home run. I mean, it's like, if you miss, you miss, but at least you swung the bat as hard as you could, you know? I don't get tired. Maybe because I'm not afraid. I think fear is a very powerful um, depressant. I can make Tommy Hilfiger famous and important brand, you know, in uh, a couple hours, you know. He is a visionary. He sees things normal people don't see. And he thinks about what they want to see before they know what they want. He had just recently developed the uh, launch ads for MTV and he developed this advertising campaign to introduce an unknown to the world of fashion overnight and he did it. He said I've got an idea why don't we put a picture of Ralph Lauren he's an old guy with white hair Calvin Klein looks a little craggy and uh, maybe Halston he's dead and then we'll say, you're the next. 
And I said, well, you can't compare me to Ralph Lauren and Calvin Klein. I mean, I can't compare myself. It'll sound like I'm bragging or something. Yeah, I like to view myself as looking at those guys as the gods. So I, I show them an ad and it says, uh, the four great American designers for men are, and then it said C dash dash dash, you know, you had to fill in the name, the Calvin Klein, the other one's R dash, you know, Ralph Lauren, P dash dash dash, Perry Ellis. Then I said T dash dash dash, H dash 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 dash. You know, who the hell knew who TH was? It's, Tommy's mother didn't know. I don't want any part of this. Of course, Tommy saw it and almost had a heart attack, so I can't do that. He sat me down and said, listen, if you want to have any name recognition in this business at all. You need millions of dollars worth of advertising over and over and over and over and it'll take you years. If you want your name to be known right away and people to go and look at your clothes, we need something unique like this. I always use the term seemingly outrageous. You should look at something and think it's a little crazy and in the next two or three or four seconds or 20 seconds you realize, wow, it's on the nose. You know, but, but the product better be damn good. Because if the product that isn't any good, I'll put it out of business. Because people would want to buy it if I it's a piece of shit. I had sleepless nights because I was thinking this is gonna, you know, this is gonna be the end of my career. And then and every once in a while I'd think, but maybe the name will become known. People will look at the clothes and like the clothes. The ads ran, people went crazy. I was drinking a little bit more in those days, and there was a bar right below our office, uh, so I used to do a lot of work down there and uh, have a bourbon while I was working. And I wrote three or four commercials for uh, the campaign uh, in about two and a half hours there. And a guy asked me, and he said, well, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm writing a campaign for the re-election of the President of the United States. And uh, <laughs> he says, sure, Al, have another drink. I'll never forget the first time I walked in and showed the president the, the Morning in America spots. And he teared up. He basically said, uh, I wish I was that good. People don't mind being sold to if they understand why it's happening and they enjoy the process. I can get MTV to be accepted by all the cable operators in America, even though they spent a year pissing on it. Oh, yeah. Company and say, I want my MTV! They didn't have any cable operators. When I told Bob Pittman, I'll get a rock star, you know, and if you do it my way, we can get thousands of rock fans to drive the cable operators crazy with phone calls. And they said, well, you can't get a rock star. They all hate us. I said, I'm, the name of the game is to get a rock star. Hi. I went after Mick Jagger and got Mick Jagger. I want my MTV. Run the commercial in San Francisco on a Thursday night. 8.30 in the morning in New York, which is 5.30 in San Francisco. The cable operator calls up Bob Pittman, gets him on his private line and says, Pittman, get that fucking commercial off the air. Pittman said, I'll take it off right away. I want my... The guy in San Francisco says, oh, by the way, I'll take it. So you'll take why? I'll take MTV. He said, why? He said, because I'm getting thousands of phone calls. I want my MTV. It's all done. It's in three seconds. I want my maple. I got you. I got you by the balls. I did the commercial. That's advertising, baby. I think creativity can solve anything. 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 Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world
the ones who do. I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed.